What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and today I'm gonna to be showing you more than 27 Mac tips and tricks that you absolutely need to know. My goal with this video is to help you become more productive and efficient on Mac OS, regardless of your current skill level. There are tips in here for both advanced users and for beginners. So in the name of efficiency, let's not waste any time, let's go ahead and get straight into it. All right, so I don't know about you guys, but I am always watching YouTube videos. I always like to have a YouTube video playing while I'm doing it, pretty much anything. I like to multitask, but that's where this first tip really comes in handy. And that is picture in picture. So if you right click on the little volume icon up here in the address bar, you will see it says enter picture in picture. Now you can also double right click on the video player. So if you double right click right here, you will see we get the option to enter picture in picture. And when you go ahead and click on that, it will put your little video player there in the corner. You can move it around to any corner you would like to. You can open up another application and it always shows down right there. You could also resize it to whatever size you would like. And if you wanna move it around and not have any restrictions, you can hold the command key and move this around anywhere you want to on your screen and it's not just limited to the corners. All right, so going back to the desktop, you guys see how clean my desktop is and how small the little icons are right there. That's because that's how I like it. I don't like it to look cluttered and the way to get your icon small and just basically have a more clutter-free desktop is to right click and go to show view options. And from here, you could change the icon size. I personally like 32 by 32. You could change that to whatever you would like to. You could also change the sort by. If you want it to snap to a grid, you could choose that, or you could sort it by whatever you would like. I like snapping everything to a grid. That way, if I move this like way over here, you know, it actually keeps it in line. So it's not gonna be off center from this icon right here. You can see it snaps back to that spot. Also the text size you could change right there and also the label position to be on the right or the bottom. And then also if you right click, you could use stacks. So if you had a lot of things on your desktop that were just like very cluttered, so like say for example, I moved all these to my desktop right there and I wanted them all to be in one icon very quickly, I could right click and click on use stacks. And then that combines all those screenshots into one little stack here on my desktop. And speaking of screenshots, you could actually change the path where screenshots save to reduce the clutter on your desktop. There's nothing worse than taking a bunch of screenshots and then you go back to your desktop and it's full of screenshot files. So to change that, all you have to do is press Command Shift 5 and then go down to options and then you could set the path to wherever you would like. And this of course is also the command that you would press to screen record and you get the option to screen record the whole screen or a certain part of the screen. And you could also trim screen recordings as well. So like if you recorded something and you wanted to trim part of it out, you can do that by pressing Command T and then also pressing Command W. And while we're on the subject of screen recording and screenshotting, if you wanna screenshot your entire screen, all you have to do is press Command Shift 3 and it will take a screenshot of your entire screen. You will see the preview in the bottom right. If you click on that, you have the option to quickly delete it if you would like to, or you could you know, do all the markup things right here. And also if you take a screenshot and then just swap swipe it over to the right, it will automatically save to your folder you have selected. And if you don't wanna take a screenshot of your entire screen, you could press Command Shift 4 and you get this little pointer right here where you can choose what you want to screenshot. And to take this even further, you could select to screenshot a specific element or window. So if you go ahead and press on Command Shift 4 again and then press the space bar over top of one of the you know elements here, you can see I could press down and it will screenshot just that folder or just that element or just that application, whatever it might be, and you can see there, it makes it kind of transparent, which is nice. And then the last thing I'll mention about QuickTime Player and screen recording is that you can actually show your iPhone screen via QuickTime on your computer if you have it plugged in and if you just go down here to change the input. So this is great for live streaming. I do this in every single live stream where I show my phone. This is also great for meetings or just whatever you want to use it for. If you're in your finder and you want to preview a file, all you have to do is press on the space bar or you can hold on the space bar and then when you let go, it will automatically go away. But if you just press it, it will stay there all the time. You can move this window around and do whatever you want with it. But if you hold it, it just keeps it there for a minute and then you let go and it disappears. Now say I wanted to copy something from this file right here, even as a preview, I can do that thanks to live text. So if you go ahead down here to where there's a lot of text right here, all I have to do is go ahead and hold my cursor over this and start just holding down like I'm selecting the text and you will notice that I can actually copy that. 
So even when you're in a preview here, you could copy that text. You don't need a third party application for that anymore. You could just copy it and then you could paste it anywhere you would like. So I don't know about you guys, but I hate when music files open up automatically in the music application after downloading them. I don't necessarily want every music file to open up in that application after I download it. Well, to fix that, all you have to do is go into your Safari, go to preferences, and then down here at the bottom, unclick open safe files after downloading and you can see it says safe files include movies pictures sounds pdf and text documents and archives so now it will no longer open those immediately after downloading so taking a look at our system preferences here i probably don't need to change settings in every single one of these panels very often and you guys probably don't either so let's clean this up a little bit so it's not as cluttered if we go up to the top right here and go to view and then to customize we could actually remove some of these that we don't actually need and we never really touch like for me for example i never touch screen time i never touch language and region and we don't need network or bluetooth because we could always access that from our control center or just from our menu bar up here so yeah this looks good for now let's go ahead and press on done and take a look at how much cleaner that looks and of course you could always add everything back by going back up into view and customize and then just rechecking it but i highly recommend cleaning up your system preferences to avoid a lot of of just clutter in here. So pretty much the only way I open up applications on my Mac these days is through Spotlight Search. So if you press on Command and Spacebar, it will pull up the Spotlight Search and you can search for whatever application you want and press Enter or Return to open that application up. But the useful trick here is that you could actually use this for currency conversion. So like if I wanted to know what what's 1500 USD to you know euros it will show me right there that it's 14,236 euros you could also do it for math problems so if i wanted to know what 98 times 78 times 9 times 6 is it will show me right there it's 412,000 and if i wanted to copy that value all i have to do is click on this and you can see i'll be able to copy that value right there if i needed to input that somewhere another mac trick is that you need to take advantage of universal clipboard to copy and paste text from your iPhone or iPad to your Mac or vice versa. I use this all the time. So if you're signed in with the same Apple ID on both devices with Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and handoff turned on, this works. Actually, you don't even need Wi-Fi. My Wi-Fi is turned off right now and it's working fine. So if I go ahead and press on Command V, I just copied something from my iPhone. You can see there it copies it right away. It has to think for a minute, but it will copy it right away. And I could do the same thing from my Mac to my iPhone. I use this feature all the time oh and something else really cool you could do with your iphone is if you right click right here and then go down to insert from iphone or ipad you get the option to take a photo scan documents or add sketch straight from your device if i clicked on take photo right here it will open up the camera on my iphone and it will go ahead and let me take a picture and it will insert that right here into the note on my macbook so it was kind of faint but did you guys notice the background music playing throughout this video yeah i know i don't usually add music in my videos because i can never find the perfect sound for the mood of the video but today's sponsor artlist alleviates that problem they have a daily updated library with more than 22,000 royalty free songs and more than 27,000 sound effects to choose from all of which can be used on any platform without any copyright issues and what makes this platform so good and intuitive to use is that you can filter the music by mood video theme beats per minute the genre or if you just like a song and you want another one that's similar to it there's a similar songs option just for that the whole interface is just super easy to use and i like how you can download with the click of a button i also like how they have artists like pages artist sections where you can see every song by that specific artist it makes it very easy to browse through and not just feel like one big library so if you want to try out artlist sign up for their personal plan it's the cheapest plan and it's going to still get you access to everything unlimited access to everything and if you sign up for their annual plan it's just ten dollars a month and if you use Use my link down in the description below you get an additional two months on top of that for free on me so big shout out to artlist for sponsoring this segment of the video let's go ahead and get back into these tips and tricks so if you want to rename a file on your mac you're probably used to just clicking on that file waiting a second and then clicking again and you can see there it selects it so you could type over it just like so well there's actually an easier way to do that so if you click on it and then just press return it selects everything right there and you could rename much faster and if i wanted to rename multiple files at once i could do that very easily by pressing on command a so i selected all these files 
files in this folder and I want to rename them. So I'll right click and go to rename. And from here, you could either do replace text, add text, or my favorite is format, where you can have whatever you want the title to be of that document. So for example, if I just put testing and I wanted it to start with the number I cannot spell. If I wanted to start with the number, let's just say I want to start with number nine. I can either put it before or after the name. I'll do it after. Click on rename. And there you go. You can see everything has been renamed to testing at nine through 32. Another really cool thing you can do from the quick actions menu in Finder is convert an image from a JPEG to a PNG or vice versa. So if I go ahead and select an image right here and go down to quick actions, we have convert image. So this is a JPEG.webp. If I want this to convert to a PNG and I want to keep it at the actual size, you can preserve the metadata there if you want to convert. And there we go. It's going to convert it just like so. And if we want to create a PDF document out of multiple photos, we could select a few photos right here, right click, go down to quick actions and create a PDF. And it will automatically create a PDF out of those documents. And if you preview it, you will see all images there in that PDF document. Now, if you're in Finder and you go to a folder that has a folder inside of a folder, you can go ahead up in that directory once you're back all the way down here and press on command up and you could go up in that directory and all the way back to where you first started. And if it's selected, you could press command down to go into that folder or that directory as well. All right, so now let's talk about some Safari hotkeys that I use every single day. So if you're in Safari and you press command L, that will select your address bar. So you could type in whatever you would like to up there very easily. And then if you press on command A, that will select all. Command C, that will that will copy it. Command V to paste that. And if you wanted to copy and paste something without the formatting, you can select that and press Command C. And if we go ahead to our notes, and if I press Command V, you can see right there, it still shows Bali is formatted. It has a link, it's yellow, it doesn't look good. So if I go ahead and Command Z to undo that, if I press on Command Shift Option V, you can see there it will paste everything without any formatting. If we press command F that will allow us to search the page for a certain word. So if I search for Bali, you can see right here, we could change it by contains or begins with, and you can see it will show all the different ones. If you just press on the return key, it will go down the page for you. So you don't have to click on these little arrows if you would not want to, if you wanted to zoom in or out of a specific web page, just press command plus or command minus, and it will zoom in on that page only. So if I went to a another tab right here, you will see it's not zoomed in in this tab. Command T is to open up a new tab and then Command Z is how to reopen the last closed tab. So if I went to Reddit right here and I went ahead and X out of it, if I press Command Z, it will reopen that tab. And if I wanted to reopen the last closed window, I could do that as well. So like for example, if I went to YouTube right here and then closed out of that window, if I press Command Shift, T, it will open up that window that I just closed. Now you guys know how I love to respond to comments on YouTube and I use a lot of emojis kind of like this guy right here. And the way I access emojis very easily on my Mac is I just press on the little globe key down here in the bottom left of the keyboard while you have, you know, your selector right here. So if you press on the globe key, you can see there I get all my emojis. I can search for them and everything. So I like having that option right there. You could also do this by pressing command control and space at the same time. So command control space that pulls it up there as well. Now heading up to the menu bar in the top right of our screen, you're not able to move icons just by pressing on them and holding and trying to move. But if you press the command key and hold the command key, you can move these icons around to whatever order you would like. I find that very nice for customization. And speaking of these menu items, and really in a lot of places on Mac OS, if you hold down the option key when pressing on menu items, you get additional options. So for example, if I held down on option and pressed on the date in time up in the top right hand corner, it will put me in do not disturb. As you can see right there, I'm in do not disturb. If I press on the option key and press it again, it takes me out of do not disturb. I use that one all the time. It's so much faster than any other way of doing it. And if we open up a bunch of finder windows and we hold down on option and go to file, we can close all of those finder windows with one press of a button. And sometimes my finder windows just freeze up and they just don't respond to anything I do. And if you right click on the finder icon, you can see there's no way to quit it. But if you hold down on option and then press on finder, right click on finder, you will see you have relaunch and that will relaunch the application and fix your freezing issue. And of course you could hold down option to force quit out of applications as well. So if you wanted to force quit out of an application that's not working properly, just hold down an option and right click it down there 
in the dock. And if you have a MacBook, you should definitely enable the battery percentage. I'm not sure why Apple has this hidden away, but if you go down here, you can see you could turn on the battery percentage. That way you always know what your battery level is at instead of just relying on the visual. And then if you have a MacBook with a notch, you will have this option under your dock and menu bar settings. If you go down to clock, you get the option right here under date options to show date, and you could have that set to only show the date when space allows. So this will hide the date and time if you have too many items up in that menu bar. Another feature I like using is split view. So if you hover over on the green icon right here on your applications, you can see you have the option to tile the window to the left or the right of the screen or go into full screen. So if I tile this to the left of the screen, you can see I can select whatever I want to go over here on the right. So if I select this window right here, it will go on the right hand side and I have a perfectly even, you know, window sizes for both. So I can multitask. You could also move them over here just like you can on iPad OS. I honestly like this feature better on iPad OS, but it still works fine here on Mac OS. And then finally, I have to mention universal control. I know this is a big feature and you probably all know about it, but if you don't, if you have an iPad and a Mac, you could use the same keyboard and mouse for your iPad and you can kind of just move in between both displays like they're interconnected. It's really hard to explain. You have to use it. So if you go into your display settings right here and then go to universal control, make sure this is turned on and you can see all the options right there to allow your cursor and keyboard to move between any nearby Mac or iPad. So if you have a MacBook and an iMac or if you have an iPad and a Mac, you could do it with any of those devices and you just have to use it to see what I mean. You can basically use the same you know, keyboard and mouse for multiple devices at the same time. It is just awesome. So there you have it, guys. Those are over 25 tips and tricks that I really think you should know about here in 2022. So if you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. I hope you learned at least one new thing. If you did, I would appreciate if you left that down in a comment below and also consider subscribing. I do videos like these all the time. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.